Diamond Johnson, a good three-point shooter, remains on the bench. Brown turned it inbound. NC State down three, 6.2 to go in overtime. Here's Perez, four seconds left. Perez floats it, Brown Turner for the tie! Got it to go! With .3 remaining, Brown Turner ties it at 77! My goodness, what a contest! Connecticut does not have a timeout remaining. They spent that final one when Fudd and Edwards were trapped. The officials just confirming the three here. That's the stoppage. 6.1 is a lot of time. Flare screen by Kinane. Well contested by Beckers. Look at the reaction. What a play drawn up by Westmore and his staff. And the NC State bench goes wild. An instant classic here at Bridgeport. Gino Ariema mystified. And that's the reason you consider fouls. Right now, they're looking to see how much time on the clock. Okay, it was .3, which would only be a tap adjacent to the basket here. Connecticut, very difficult, obviously. They can't time out in advance, but there is time now for a catch and shoot. So point eight to go in overtime. <laughs> what a shot, what a game. Brown Turner ties it. She had been one for six from three tonight. Fudd will be the one to inbound it. UConn is gonna need a prayer or it's gonna be double overtime. Beckers doesn't get it off. And we have a second overtime in Bridgeport. What a drama. Moments ago, Rebecca, Shakia Brown Turner tying it on a three. There's some options here. Reina Perez gets it. Crutchfield coming out. Uh-uh, we want the flare screen. Watch Brown Turner as soon as it goes in. Incredible. I mean, this game is just sensational. How could it be better? There has never been a double overtime game in the Elite Eight or later until tonight. Welcome to history. Seventy-seven, seventy-seven. Start of the second overtime. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Andrea Carter, Holly Rowe with you. What do you got for us, Drea? Well, to look at this play one more time, Jakia Brown Turner is a lefty. The pass was to her left hand. A beautiful delivery by Reina Perez. Jakia Brown Turner barely had to move the ball before she put it up and in. That's she didn't have paw strokes. <laughs> she didn't have time to move the ball. <laughs> Good pass leads to good shot, right, Drea? Absolutely, Rebecca. Now, something to keep in mind here, Edwards and Nelson Adota are both playing with four fouls. They've navigated it nicely down the stretch of this game. But obviously, more minutes, more opportunities for one of them to foul out. Early here in the second overtime, and look for NC State to go inside to Kinane. Maybe you pick up that fifth foul early on one of the Connecticut bigs. Kinane has 14 points, 6 of 11 shooting, 8 rebounds as well. Nelson Adota and Kinane to jump it up. For the first time in the Elite Eight or later, we have double overtime as UConn wins the tip. Beckers had 10 in the first overtime period. Here's Fudd around the Nelson Adota screen. Patient offensive set. Beckers again! It's in her blood. Living for these moments. She hasn't missed in overtime. Kanane 
reverses it in. How about the finishes and big moments tonight from Alyssa Kanane? First play, diagonal up screen, get Kanane on the block. She had a little on her, but still finished on the other side. And what you're talking about, Rebecca, maybe getting that fifth foul on Nelson Dota or Edwards. Could be a game changer. Alisa Kanane has come through in the clutch tonight over and over again. Beckers has as well. <laughs> 27 for Beckers. 15 in overtime. Three-point UConn lead. Kanane wants it, Brown Turner drives it, flips it, can't hit it, Edwards, and a foul. Paige Beckers is just built different. She's built different in the kind of blood, the DNA that lets you do that. Elisa Kanane finishing on the other side of the rim has been terrific. Paige Beckers one more time. Polly. Well, four years ago, we were at the Final Four in Tampa, and Gino Oriema said to me, I've got the next Diana Taurasi coming. And I said, who? It's a kid named Paige Beckers out of Minnesota. I walked out into the parking lot, and she just happened to be coming in the building as part of Kara Lawson's Team USA three-on-three -three team. And I looked at this scrawny kid, <laughs> and I thought, that's the next Diana Taurasi? But I'm going to tell you this, in the overtime, I think I'm starting to believe it. Yeah. First half, two of six from the floor. Second half in overtime, eight for eight for Beckers. Edwards hits two massive free throws. She's improved greatly there, over 80% this season. Five-point UConn lead. Brown Turner on the attack, the kick. Crutchfield, they need it, they have it. On a three. They progressed to their mean, Ryan. Starting to drain them. Kai Crutchfield continues to live up to that nickname of Kai Crutchfield. Two-point game. That five-point lead a moment ago was the first lead greater than four for either team since the third quarter. Williams denied by Kanane. Looking for help. Flips it out. Fun. No. Second chance points, UConn in front. Perez, the crossover, the dish. Kanane lays it in. Beautiful breakdown from Reina Perez. All right, beautifully done. Nelson Adota had to come over. Edwards could not get back to Kanane. Elisa Kanane with 18 points, 8 for 13 from the floor. It's a two point game. Beckers has not missed in the second half. Beckers finally does. Kanane the rebound. A chance for NC State to tie this game up or pull in front. Perez, the veteran leader directing traffic. Jones dumps it in. Kanane couldn't handle it, couldn't save it. NC State turns it over. A little too far away on the pass from Kayla Jones. The right corner has been good to NC State. They get into the double overtime, and then here, Crutchfield with a big shot, and Connecticut has been terrific on the offensive glass. Oh, this has just been a beautiful basketball game. High level here in Bridgeport. 105 to go in the second overtime. Two-point UConn lead. Fudd gives it up. Williams on the attack. That's going to be a block. Now they can look to see whether or not she was in the restricted area. If that's the reason the foul was called a block. Yep. That's a block. 
The right call made. She's in the restricted area. Even if your toes are outside, but your heel is above, you're in the restricted area. Williams misses the free throw. First missed free throw in a while for UConn after they had started so cold. 68% free throw shooter makes the second. It's a three-point game. 54.8 to go in the second overtime. Each team with one timeout remaining. Crutchfield around the screen. Brown Turner lost it, got it back. Finds Kanane. Perez will take. No rebound. Boyd. And a foul is called on who? It'll be on Edwards, and that is her fifth. Or is it on Nelson Adota? Nelson Adota's block was clean. I believe it was on Aaliyah Edwards. It is. Aaliyah Edwards has fouled out. Maybe across the chest from Edwards. Let's see. Right there with the right hand. That would have to be what it was. Yeah. So Edwards is fouled out, and now UConn downsizes with Westbrook. Meanwhile, massive free throws here for Boyd. He's a 78% free throw shooter, five for six tonight. The player who Westmore calls their X Factor. So many can't bear to watch. Boyd misses. Remember, this is like a road game for NC State in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A heavy UConn crowd. Vian Westbrook, important to box out. Second free throw is good. It's a two-point game, two-second difference. Game and shot clock. NC State going to try and pressure into a turnover. Deflection here. Beckers gets it ahead. Williams lays it up and in. It's a four-point UConn lead. 21 seconds to go. Perez with some space. Short on a three. Westbrook out of bounds. And it will be NC State basketball with 13.6 to go. Connecticut worked a lot yesterday on breaking the press. They were able to do it. Kristen Williams gets inside and finishes strong. Westmore not going to take his final time out here. Going to hold on to it. Perez will inbound. Brown Turner back in that right corner. On the attack, lays it in. Two-point game. And now Westmore is going to take his final time out. And Rebecca, this is exactly... Now, Gino's saying, is it my timeout or is it NC State's timeout? If NC State did this last year in the Sweet 16 and then wasn't able to advance the basketball, could Westmore have just done the same exact thing? I think he did. But in order for Gino Oriama, if he wants to advance the basketball, he will then have to use his timeout after Westmore's timeout. They both were trying to take timeouts. But I think the officials gave it to NC State. I think you're right. They're going to go to the scorer's table here to settle it. Here's the layup for Brown Turner, and then you'll see Wes Moore call for the timeout. But Rebecca. I'm stunned. Why? You're giving up the chance, you're down. You're giving up the chance to advance the basketball to set up your defense. This is exactly what NC State did in the Sweet 16 last year when they lost to Indiana. And then they couldn't advance it down three in the final seconds. Especially since Connecticut still has one left. So if you set up your full court defense and Connecticut can't inbound, fine. They'll just call their timeout and advance the basketball. We'll see how this shakes out whether or not that ends up playing a big role, but a highly questionable decision from an outstanding head coach in Westmore. 89-87, UConn in front, 10.1 to go in the second overtime. Yeah, we feel you.
Rebecca, first ever double overtime game in the Elite Eight or later. There's been so many dramatic moments down the stretch, none more so than Brown Turner's three with under a second to go to send this game into a second overtime. What did Gino Arama tell us earlier today? He said neither of these teams is going to lose the game. Mm. One of these teams is going to go out and win the game and make the plays to win the game. And we've seen that time and time again from both sides. And he said, to win in these games, you need someone to be great. Paige Beckers has in the overtime periods. 23 points since halftime for Paige Beckers. 15 of them coming in these two overtime periods. A reminder, if you're looking for Michigan and Louisville, that game on ESPNU, we will get you there as soon as this one goes final. Winner of this game will face Stanford in Minneapolis. Winner of Michigan-Louisville will face South Carolina. All right, Rebecca, Connecticut, are they going to use their final timeout to advance it? Yeah. They will. And this way, if you do turn it over, at least NC State has to go the length of the floor in order to score. If you turn it over in your backcourt, that could be an easy one for NC State. You know, Rebecca, so often we see trouble with these sort of inbounds. What are the key things to focus on when you are in a spot like UConn right now, inbounding the ball, up two with no timeouts Starts remaining. with your inbounder. It's somebody you trust. Typically, Connecticut has Paige Beckers as their inbounder because she's their best passer and the one they trust, but you also want her receiving the pass. Raina Perez came up with the game-winning steal against Notre Dame in the Sweet 16. Another great passer, Olivia Nelson Adota. This one with size will inbound the ball for Connecticut. 6-5, one of the best passing bigs in the nation. Nelson Adota looking in, looking for someone, has to get it in, finds Fudd. Fudd gets it to the corner. Westbrook finds Williams, and that is the dagger. Williams lays it in, four-point game. Streak lives, making 14 straight trips to the final four for the Connecticut Huskies. An unforgettable classic, and UConn outlasts NC State 91 87 in the first ever double overtime Elite Eight contest. And they hug their injured teammate, Dorka Juhasz.